So everybody wants to know what should you sell online? What's going to make you, you personally, the most money? That's the topic today, and we're also going to show you some of what we sell and why we sell it. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to talk about one of the biggest questions, one I get asked constantly every single day of my life. What should I be selling online? What's going to make me the profit? How am I going to make a living? And what should I sell to get to those points? Now, most people are extremely disappointed when I tell them the actual answer, the response that I give to that. Now, I can't really honestly tell you what someone else should sell because there's no way to tell if you can actually get that item. There's tens of thousands of things you could sell online on most platforms. You could sell the same thing across most platforms. But again, if you can't get that item, I could tell you a billion things to, to sell. And if you can't find them, you can't sell them. Not only that, you, you got to be able to find them in a quantity. Anything, and I do mean anything, can make you a huge amount of profit and make you enough income for a full-fledged living and have extra money to do things. But you have to be able to get it in quantity, and there has to be a, a decent size amount of people, if it's a low-value item, that want the item, that will constantly be buying the item. A toothbrush is a real good example of that. Everybody goes through multiple toothbrushes in a single year, so when you're looking at something like that, it's a cheaper item. It doesn't cost a lot. It's something that I've personally sold on eBay myself, even on Amazon in the past. So it's just an example of an item that if you can get it in quantity, even if you're only making $1.50, $1.75 a pop, you might be selling 100 of them a day. So on an item like that, there's always money there. Anything can be profitable at quantity, at scale, if you're able to sell it and broadcast it out. Now, most items you run into aren't going to be like that. Most people can't routinely find the same types of items without doing this for a long time and making a lot of connections. So if I tell you that this is the best thing, whatever it is, you, again, may not be able to get those items. Tools around here. Every dealer, every vendor that I know of right this minute has people that they've been dealing with for a decade plus to buy all of their tools whatever they are craftsmen whatever type of, t of tools that they end up with at an estate sale or in their business that comes in or any of that stuff pawn shop whatever there's somebody who already has spoken for it before i would ever walk in the door it's already sold every time they've already got deals arranged so i can't get certain things there's a lot of things i can't get Clothing-wise, we started with clothing and books and scanning and all that kind of stuff, just like most people do. I can't get clothing that's worth more than eight or so bucks a pop on any routine basis around here. So I'd have to be scouring and sourcing 10 hours a day, you know, 40, 50 hours a week just to get enough to even remotely get anywhere near where I am right now with the stuff that we sell. I'm going to show you what we sell in just a minute here, just so you can get an idea. I'll show you some sold items, average stuff across the board. You'll see it in many of my videos, the same types of things. Now, why do I sell those, those things that I'm going to show you? It's because I can get them. I know I figured out from dealing in certain niches for years, for decades, on where are good sources to find many, many, many things. Every year or so, I probably get a couple more new sourcing venues for things that I hadn't thought of in the past. I keep expanding on them. So I'm always going to have some place to find something or, or snag something up. So if one item dries up, I'll have to move somewhere else. Sometimes certain types of material just stop showing up. 70s toys. I used to find Star Wars toys everywhere. 10, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, it was just phenomenal. Everywhere you went. Good stuff, you know, the last 17 and, and things like that from Return of the Jedi. But these days, it's almost non-existent. I've, I think we may have got maybe 20 or so Star Wars figures this year, and that's it. You know, some vehicles. I've got a lot of G.I. Joes that luckily we got for nothing and some other items. But Star Wars figures have really dried up out in the, the wild, I would say. So if you can't find it, you can't sell it. And around here, if somebody advertises vintage toys, it's probably like that in most areas in the country. 
the sales going to have a ton of people showing up an hour, two hours early. Sometimes they even show up the night before around here to snake out everybody else coming in the next day when the sale is actually going on. You know, so the competition is something else. So the, the opportunities to get certain items aren't there. So the answer to that question is there is no right or wrong thing to sell online. There's no, hey, you have to sell this or you should sell that because it's going to always come down to what you're able to get, what your skill set is, how well you're able to take advantage of your knowledge and figure out where to get stuff in bulk. Bulk is the key for any of this. We buy like 95% of everything that comes into our, our business is bought in bulk as big as I can get. Sometimes I've bought 10, 15, 20, even up to 50,000 uh, individual listings worth, individual items all at the very same time. Takes some money to do that, but that's the best way to do it. Let's hop over and show you some of the items that we routinely sell and that garner us a ton of profit. Let's just look at a few items here just to give you an idea on the stuff that I sell. Now, pens are something I've talked about for years and years, and this one actually has a calendar on it. So you can turn the dial on here and adjust it so you've got the days of the week and the whole works on here. It's a pretty neat pen, nothing spectacular. It's from a small town in Ohio. Um, it has some radio signal call letters in it and the whole works on here, 25 years worth of service in here. It's an interesting item. It's an oddball item. We've got almost nothing into it. These are the types of things I can buy in big bulk lot, hundreds of them at a time, many cases, for 50 cents, a quarter a piece. I'll pay up to a dollar for most of them. I don't care. There's something I can list a bunch and just leave them until they start selling. I usually get some sold right away, and boom, this one did sell for what you see at $23.46. Now, I love vintage silver-plated items. Most people don't pay much attention to them. The biggest draw on this one is actually on the bottom of this one. And if you look very closely, it's stamped with the USN for United States Navy. Reed and Barton made them. Silver soldered. It's exactly what you would expect to find. It has a little picture of a ship stating quality in the whole works on there. It's a lidded dish. It's actually from an officer's dining hall on a ship, a U.S. Navy ship, and that's what it is. It's from World War II. Clearly, it's identifiable. I want to say we took 70 bucks shipped out the door on this. It's been up for a little while. No big deal. It was a dollar purchase. You can't go wrong for a dollar. It's something that everybody missed because they didn't pick it up or assumed as soon as they saw that it was silver plate that it wasn't worth much money. Now, I love vintage jewelry. These faux vintage 1950s items sell extremely well for us. Now, this one, it's kind of hard to see, but on the very bottom, it says Coro, C-O-R-O -O for Coral Craft. They make a lot of vintage jewelry. If you didn't pay attention, you would probably miss this one here because it's not stamped in very well. It's an early one from the 1940s. Not the best image. That might have helped it a little bit, but it did sell for $26 and some change out the door shipped. Now, I love old barns and old garages, and this is one of those items that was found in one of those for a dollar. It doesn't look like much. It's a heavy, junky. It's got a lot of dust, dirt, rust on it. Um, I've heard several different things on what this is. I was told at one time it was for a exercise machine. I've been shown pictures, but I've also been shown pictures where it was used in barns. So maybe it was a dual purpose item. I don't know, but it was just fine for a $55 and some change, I do believe, shipped out the door on this one. Again, this is one of those dollar things. I just threw a bunch of junk together. All these rusty old items here are sitting out in a barn and bought them at the sale from there. Nobody else wanted it. It was the last day. I got them all for almost nothing. Now, I love silverware. Civil War items I do sell regularly across the board. Buttons, uniform items, buckles, and things like that. Even uniforms themselves we've sold in the past. This is a three-tine fork with wooden handle. It has the traditional rivets, 1860s-ish, Civil War. This is what you would find. Even these are dug up on battlefields sometimes. Not in the best condition, obviously. I've personally dug a few of these myself. This stylish. These routinely sell for $15 plus shipping, which is what we basically got out of this one as well. Now, like I said, we do very well with vintage records. This was from a big, huge haul. 
I don't think we have a single solitary dime in this. We invested gas, and that's about it. I think we gave a donation or something on this purchase here. But we've sold so many of them that it's paid. We've got hundreds of dollars of profit off of this. This is an early jazz, the original Memphis 5. You'll see Foxtrot written on most of these. Let's see if I can show you. Whenever you see Foxtrot, that's almost always specifically a jazz. So that's just something to keep in mind on here. Many different brands. This label doesn't show up very often. It has the Paith Rooster up at the top to give you an idea on manufacture. This is dated 1920. That's the copyright, and that's about when this was made, shortly after World War I. It sold for $35 plus they paid for shipping. I do a ton in labels as well. It's something that I've figured out sources for. It's something that I can routinely buy constantly. So my inventory on labels is constantly rotating. We're selling them and constantly listing them as well. So as long as you can keep flowing, you will keep regular and routine customers coming back on a constant basis. We sell to the same people, dozens of them these days, constantly. Almost every day, a buyer comes back and buys something else, or at least one person is buying multiple items, three, four, five, six items, all at the same time. Today alone, three different people bought multiple items from us. This is just a luggage label, nothing super fancy. City of San Francisco, it's a streamliner. This is the Overland route. Uh, we got $14 and some change out of this one. Here's yet another one. This is an early 1920s or 30s, and an oddball thing you'll see at the top is there is a swastika on it. Now, that's a peace symbol if you didn't know it. This is long before it was used for nefarious uh, causes. So this is an interesting one. It's Southwestern Mini Max. It's the Hilton Hotel in El Paso, Texas. Really a nice piece of paper here. And this one sold for 45 bucks plus shipping. Now, this is an interesting item. This is a cigarette wrapper. This is the part that would go over the box for a pack of cigarettes from the 1870s or 80s. Now, this isn't all there. This is only part of it. This is the front-facing piece of the wrapper that would go around it. It's missing... Geez, probably about 60% of it. We sold it for 65 bucks plus shipping on this one here. It's been up for a little while. We bought a massive assortment of these. I have nothing into it. From this very same purchase, we've sold around $6,000 worth of cigarette wrappers alone. 3000 in the very first day that we listed these without any problem whatsoever. Now, a huge area for us is postcards as well. We sell multiple postcards every single day of the week. Every day of the year, we are selling postcards, not just on one site, but on many different sites. The postcard categories in general have made us tens of thousands of dollars, and it's something that I can get in massive bulk, 1,000, 5,000, 10,000 at a time in quantity. Now, here's one that's been up for a little while here. We took $20 for this one here. There's not a ton of people looking for an opera singer from 1905, prior to the time of many of the records that would be out there. So 20 bucks was fine with us. We purchased a massive lot of opera and singer-related, musician-related postcards. We've sold, geez, over half of them, and our profits are around 15 times our investment already, and we still have around 40 or 50 more to sell. Now, photographs. I grab up tons of photographs all the time in massive bulk quantity. State sales are great for this. Now, these are six photos from Peking, China. There's markings on the back. It actually has a Chinese marking stating uh, the, the photographer on it. So it's got some provenance on here. So anybody looking at this who knows the area, who knows the markings on this, will know without a doubt that it's the real deal. These were purchased at an estate sale with a ton of other items from a USGI. There are actual photographs, real ones. Six of them of the area around the Great Wall of China also. Items from China as well have made us tens of thousands of dollars also. Now, one of my favorite and one of those niches that most people stray away from or just don't have the knowledge to sort them out and find them are uniform buttons. I make a fortune in uniform buttons, a couple thousand dollars every single month for more than two plus years since we started listing them in mass quantity. This is from an asylum in France. We sold it for 85 bucks plus shipping. It's going back to France as well. Very early as well. Nice Paris back mark on it. This dates to around 1880s, 1890s. 
So it's a great sale on these sorts of items. I have nothing into it. Now here's another one. This button dates to the 1820s. And you can positively identify it as being made in that time frame by how it's marked on the back. The seam, the, the front gilting has worn down from it being around 200 years old at this point. I took $85 plus shipping on this one. It's been in inventory a little while. I've got another one of these, as well as more from the very same series production by the same company. It's a hunt club button, a hunting scene on the front. It would have been worn on like a hunting jacket or something along that line. Now here's the back itself. It might be a little hard to read, but with a loop, you can easily identify what it says. You can easily tell the age. This is what's referred to as a coin style button. It's in the shape of a coin with the shank on the back. It's solid stamped out brass in this case. Again, all profit. And here's just one last item here. For those who have been following me for a little while, the numbers in my title you know mean something, so you know what's going on with this listing here. We've sold three of these buttons for 55 bucks a piece. Very good sellers. I've got other listings of this same button, but with a different back mark, and we've sold multiples of those as well. This is all profit, less the fees. So basically, we've got $165 coming in from three of these buttons. I have nothing into it, and cost-wise, other than, again, the listing fees paid to eBay. If you can't get it, you can't sell it. So regardless of what somebody tells you you should be selling, think about what you can get that can get you a profit. If you can find it in quantity, like I said earlier, you can make a lot of money as long as it's a desirable item. Well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. You make this shot, you can have anything you want for dinner. Go, go. Oh, I have Kentucky Fried Chicken, Mom. You got it, superstar. Kids love Kentucky Fried Chicken, just like other folks. And with all those delicious fixins, what a meal. It's